the journey of the brightest minds behind some of the most inspiring brands in Asia. We built our entire business actually off the back of user behavior and really understanding what the Filipino was doing down to the user experience of our platform. Prominent leaders from the world of marketing, advertising and media have changed the game by leveraging digital technologies to solve for key business challenges and drive tangible outcomes. Welcome to a new episode of Insights with Inmobi, a video series where we celebrate the journey of the brightest minds behind some of the most inspiring brands in Asia. In this thought leadership series, we explore how some of the most prominent leaders from the world of marketing, advertising and media have changed the game by leveraging digital technologies to solve for key business challenges and drive tangible outcomes. I'm your host, Sudhanshu Saxena, and I'm director of the SPN Supply Partnerships at Inmobi. Joining me today is Arine Kadeku, who serves as country head of a well-known on-demand sweeping company, uh, View for the Philippines. Arine has over 10 years of experience in retail and media consumer business. Notably, she was an integral part of Zalora Philippines launch in 2012 and was appointed to lead the strategic marketplace global expansion until 2017. She joined View Philippines in August 2017, responsible for developing the country's penetration and growth strategy together with Philippines' leading companies. Arine was born and raised in California and holds a master's degree in business from Antonio Graduate School of Business. Thank you so much for joining us today, Arine. We are thrilled to have you. And I must mention, that's a lot of achievements in just the past decade and an amazing <laughs> journey. Very impressive. Yeah, it has been a very wild ride, I would say, in, in the digital space, um, in, in the Philippines particularly, and really have enjoyed every moment of it. Amazing. So to kick things off, Irene, I mean, would love to, uh, you know, uh, heard from you. Tell us a little more about your experience. How did your journey start? What has it been like to grow a business in Southeast Asia, building View Philippines brand and beyond? <laughs> It has been a ride, <laughs> that's for sure. And the situation was, you know, early 2016, 2017, there were major global competitors and also regional competitors in market entering the Philippines. Um, at that time, Philippines is, or even until now, um, we're still predominantly a TV uh, market. Um, and so we really wanted to understand um the Filipino more specifically, and really have our teams on ground, um, understand their behavior, what, what was driving them in terms of entertainment and content. And the interesting thing about the Philippines is uh, some people call it a colonial mentality, right? You will ask a Filipino, uh, well, at that time, uh, you know, what, what are your favorite things to do? And, and going to the movie theaters with your family is really the number one uh, family outing activity and typically they'll watch you know the latest block summer blockbuster at that time Iron Man or you know all of the the Disney Hollywood content is really kind of what they would kind of gravitate towards in terms of when you are asking them um, and and they were willing to pay I mean going to the movie theater you have to buy popcorn all the tickets for your family and so um, outsiders looking into the market um, I mean, naturally, you would think, okay, Philippines, great. You know, they love Western content. And not only that, they're willing to pay for it, right? And and upwards of, you know, $10 USD in, in some cases, depending on how large your family was. Um, and so a lot of the regional and global players came in headfirst with a subscription model and Western content. And um, at VIEW, we still, we still stood back. We didn't launch yet. We still continue to um, scope the market, understand the consumer. And, and, and what we realized was when you go deeper with the Filipino into their home and actually see what they're doing every day in terms of entertainment and content, we realized that there was a heavy piracy going on. And not just the Philippines, of course, this is a global challenge that we deal with. But um, the interesting thing about piracy and that behavior is it's a seek out behavior, uh, meaning pirate sites don't have billboards and digital ads and influencers, right? I mean, this is all organic word of mouth, link sharing online, particularly um, at the time. And um, when we dove deeper into what are they pirating, um, it was Asian content. It was Filipino content and Korean dramas. And then there was also some heavy emergence in terms of anime as well. And so that's where we decided, hey, you know, 
it's not actually Western content in the Philippines. It's really Asian content that the Filipinos are actively trying to find. Um, and so we built our entire business actually off the back of user behavior and really understanding what the Filipino was doing down to the user experience of our platform. So that was essential is um, we, we were really kind of from the get go, uh, a free service, right? Because we were really, we really had our eye on piracy as our main competitor. Um, and we offered the free layer so that we can build up our, our base, offer a space for the Filipino to watch content. Um, and while we were building that up and creating revenue streams through ads, we were then able to take that data, use it to drive um, a clear marketing strategy and penetration strategy um, to grow our now subscription business, um, which... Uh, I will brag a little bit about here. We did uh, announce or uh, Media Partners Asia did announce that we view as a, a group did um, outrank uh, Netflix for the very first time in terms of subscriptions um, in Southeast Asia. So it's working. <laughs> Congratulations for, you, for that to you and uh, the rest of the VIEW team as well. That's quite, that's quite uh, impressive and inspirational. At one hand, you know, uh, fighting the challenges of very stiff competition, challenges like piracy, but at the same time, keeping user at the center and rather than looking at one size fit all, uh, you know, uh, approach. Uh, moving now further on to the OTT side of things. I mean, OTT video streaming consumption um, in past year due to the pandemic has actually skyrocketed, which has also brought with it, you know, its own new set of challenges and opportunities. I mean, if you look at overall online video consumption, it has exploded across the globe. Now we're taking the time spent on traditional television as well. In Southeast Asia, that content was powered majority by OTT and the device of choice was mobile. So what has it been like for you at VIEW if you look at exponential trajectory, uh, you know, that has happened or that has come through in last one and a half to two years specifically? Definitely. Um, well, one challenge that has really emerged from the pandemic is really the fact that a lot of our productions have halted or are even currently at this point being halted, right? And um, if you consider the production process alone, it takes years before you even start rolling, right? And um, when you kind of how we've been able to structure it is you have to get everybody, you know, over 100 crew members in a bubble testing in no one can leave for minimum of one month, right. And um, it's very challenging one on, on a schedule perspective with getting all of the talents and everybody's scheduled to align. Um, but then those bubbles are then disrupted as the variant and the dangers and, and whatever's happening globally. Um, so you might have a, a production bubble scheduled back to back and maybe that might not happen. So we are uh, feeling that and it has been a challenge, um, but we've made sure that there are plenty of protocols in place to keep, of course, our crew um, and our partners uh, safe. Um, another challenge, I think also um, as while the demand for um, and appetite for online viewers has increased. Of course, we as an industry really have to work together to combat piracy. I think that's also, not only did we see some growth, of course, on our platforms, but I think overall, as more people were home, piracy did start to increase more um, as people are, are craving for content. Um, but some opportunities, I think, um, one really amazing thing that has happened is that we found that in the pandemic, um, you know, people are looking for their passion, right? They're very much aligned to um, doing things that uh, they believe in or they're passionate about. And while they have this time to choose, they're aligning also with brands who support them or, or educate them. Um, and one one passion point that we've identified is really the passion for premium Asian content and Korean content specifically. Um, and this time has been really the boom, I would say, in terms of, we've always had a, a really hardcore following, but in terms of kind of the mass appeal of K-content um, and also K-pop music, um, this has been a passion point, uh, which has been a great opportunity for us being the platform with uh, the most Korean content um, available. Uh, we've also been able to take that data and also uh, apply that 
to some of the original content that we create. So understanding the shifts in the behavior of, of consumers um, and our viewers and, and what they're seeking out, um, we've been able to not only adapt to the content that we produce on our own for View Originals, um, but also what we license. Amazing. And those were some unprecedented challenges, something that you could not prepare for, like while trying to differentiate why original and premium content, but as the production stops, uh, what would you do? Now, moving further, uh, we dis discussed this earlier as well, that vast majority of online video uh, watching in Southeast Asia is on mobile. And now over 80% of OTT organizations also report that majority of the consumption is happening on mobile. So mobile pretty much is at the center of the universe, right? It involves consumers on one side and OTT organizations on, on the other side, right? I mean, would love to hear how critical a pillar mobile or smartphone for your users is. And how has mobile guided the user experience experience or product or business strategy at you or how do you believe that continues to guide uh, you know, all of these pillars at you? Sure. I'll, I'll answer that in two, two ways. One, first talking about the user experience um, when watching on our platform. Um, so we are predominantly female on our base. About over 70% of our viewers are female. And when, and I love to use this example because it really shows, and, and those of you who are K-drama fans, you'll definitely resonate to this. But um, when you're watching a K-drama on your phone, um, you're typically in your room um, alone um, and you have maybe your headphones in, you're holding your phone and you have either downloaded your content or you're streaming it. Um, and you've cleared your schedule because you know a K-drama is about an hour long and you have to read the subtitles. You're fully locked in and immersed in your show and it's a relationship and it's very intimate. You're holding your phone close to your heart and you're, you're really absorbing and really in to the content that you're watching. And that is really driven on that experience. I mean, you're essentially having a relationship with your phone <laughs> um, to watch your favorite uh, K-drama stars. Um, so in terms of kind of user experience, we really zoom in on, again, on that emotional and, and entire um, ecosystem of, of what it is like to watch a K-drama. Um, but on the business side, um, in terms of um, advertising, and again, we do have uh, uh, quite a bit of our users still on the free layer. Um, and I would say about 80 to 90% of our advertising impressions are coming through um, our mobile app. So while we do have TV and we do have the web on, on the laptop, um, it's really being generated through the, their mobile app. So meaning most of the users are downloading um, our app to view the content. So it's really essential, not only in terms of the overall experience, um, of the user, but then of course, on a business perspective, um, our ads are, are being generated through that. Lovely. Mobile has become the most personal device that ever existed, isn't it? And moving on to this, you know, further on the second part that you talked about of the ecosystem, the advertiser. How is View Philippines working with advertisers to leverage this massive opportunity you just talked about to uh, its fullest potential? And, and there's some great news and stats on that front too. Uh, on one hand, recent reports are indicating that uh, significant amount of users are willing to have an ad experiences on OTT platforms, of course, in exchange of viewerships. And on the other, other side, advertisers are also showing great amount of interest in targeting premium users in a very clean, curated, and brand-safe environment. So, Arin, how do you at View see advertisers uh, responding to this great opportunity? Um, so, I, I'm also an advertiser, if you'll take that um, in terms yeah. of how we're trying to penetrate the market. And also we work alongside brands to figure out what is the best campaign um, and what can we do depending on their objective. Um, there's so many things that are changing right now with targeting and, and I think cookies and all of those things right now. And there's a lot of great things that are changing, actually. I think it's about time that we look and understand really about the pir uh, privacy and respecting the, 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 be the viewers actually coming to our platform. Um, at the same time, supporting um, our ecosystem, which is through our brand partners. Um, no matter what inherently, whether it be us doing our own marketing or working with our partners, it's important to have that personal relationship with the viewer. Um, because 
if we don't understand them or if we don't have a way to um, track their behavior or understand um, their affinities, we will not know what what will drive, of course, engagement metrics, right? Click through rates or even, you know, loyalty on our platform or the ability to ensure that we're serving the right content to these users. So it all comes down to ensuring that we have the right behaviors um, aligned with the target market that we're trying to um, opt to, essentially, both um, with our brand partners. Um, and when we do this and we look at an entire campaign with our brand partners end to end, we look at um, all the behaviors that are available. And again, particularly for us, we are the female network now. So um, while women are very complex, um, there are a lot of things that we do enjoy as a group. And so um, it's e uh, a lot easier for us to identify those cohorts um, and work with our brands to uh, speak with them or, or develop that relationship. Lovely. So, I mean, keeping user at the center of the universe, it, it does tend to solve for a lot of those challenges, isn't it? Uh, now to shift gears a bit on how uh, View is thinking of its own marketing and advertising since the onset of pandemic. You did touch about that. So while consumers in Asia have taken to streaming content more readily than the rest of the world, and at the, on the other hand, competition is also quite stiff. So how does View differentiate itself in terms of giving its consumers and advertisers unique and scalable opportunities? Would love to, you know, dive a bit deep into it you did touch upon that but we'd love to hear more from you uh, Irene on this one as well sure it, to be honest it all starts with being attuned to our local audience and also having our team on ground um, it's really the heart of what we do we have our entire operations here in the Philippines and while we don't have get to see our our viewers as much as we'd like we're, there's still so many things that we've done to really continue to connect with them. Um, and in terms of kind of how do we stand out again, I, I believe it's really how we have been able to build that relationship. Um, View has always had a direct to consumer relationship from the get go. Um, we started very guerrilla. Um, again, going back to kind of our early days, we realized in the Philippines um, as links were being shared, um, that there were about, at that time, there were about 80 Facebook fan groups um, around Korean content and the actors. And across those 80, um, they reached about 11 million Filipinos every day sharing links. <laughs> um, and what we had done was we really, you know, reached out to them. Um, we hired most of them actually to run different aspects of our business and these people were anywhere from accountants to teachers all over the industry no no, no familiarity with ott or streaming and we brought them on board um, because we felt that they were really the key drivers in understanding um the filipino and um from there, that's really how we started to create. Um, aside from kind of all of the digital marketing and, and really targeting that audience, um, I find that now, um, especially in the last year, we're kind of going back to that um, kind of guerrilla style marketing because everybody's online now. It is so noisy. Um, and how do you stand out without having, you know, a major marketing paycheck to, to uh, run your campaigns. So we realized that for content nowadays and, and with the pandemic in the last year, if you if you yourself, I'm sure you've experienced this, but when you look at timelines of you know lockdowns and pandemics, they're typically aligned to what shows you're watching at that time. So <laughs> we find that like pandemic, like depending on what you're talking about, it's also aligned with that timeline. And so you know we launched with World of Married Couple, which was like the the moment, you know, Southeast Asia went and locked the first lockdown and then we ended the year. Now we're on like another uh, timeline in terms of content. So um, a lot of those are being shared in the WhatsApp groups. And again, going back to kind of passion points and the ability for consumers to be connected or and feel connected to their friends while they are apart. Um, we've kind of penetrated that that uh, your Facebook group or your Viber chat group or your WhatsApp chat group um, in our own um, a, a bit more kind of guerrilla marketing way, which I find is very different from a global player or even some other regional players in market. 
definitely very very different and very interesting uh, that's amazing um and uh, this brings me to the last question that we have for you um uh, arine um we understand that ott video streaming industry has seen exponential growth the kind of innovations that have also come in have been amazing what does the future hold for ott video streaming industry of course a lot of innovations have also coming but what innovations are you most excited about we're always looking for opportunities um to fill the needs of our online audience and that includes um deepening our penetration with our partners in market um and and particularly in the philippines um we work closely with you guys in terms of ad technologies and also in terms of our own machine learning capabilities um and new technologies out there to understand the consumer um ad tech is so interesting to me because again these are moment marketing activations where we can again have um somebody sneezing in a show and an ad will pop up in the show itself um correlated to an antihistamine or an allergy medication um or a kissing scene and uh, something will pop up with um either lipstick or toothpaste <laughs> um and so i believe that in terms of what really excites me is what we can do together as partners in terms of ad tech um and that ability to really be there at that moment which is unlike um a UGC platform or even on television so um we could do this at scale and this is really interesting for me and and something that i'm most excited about that's lovely and so are we uh that's amazing to hear arin and so with this uh it brings us to the end of this episode and what a great takeaway at the end uh it's quite evident ott led video consumption has exploded consumers are spending disproportionate amount of time on it and they're doing it on their mobile devices yes it does bring in its own set of challenges more so uh during the pandemic times uh but along with it are also there massive amount of opportunities for advertisers too and uh, leading ott organizations like view is doing some very very exciting work to ensure a great user experience premium local content and premium and scalable tech led opportunities for the advertisers and i look forward to this exciting journey as more and more uh, innovation uh, unfolds itself uh, thank you so much for watching this episode and thank you so much erin uh, for joining us today uh, it was my privilege to host you thank, uh, thank you so much Thank you. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our deep dive into OTT industry and the advertising landscape, and these insights were useful for you. If you are keen to find out more about Inmobi Solutions, head over to our website www.inmobi.com. That's all for this episode, folks. See you next time. Over and out. Thank you. <laughs>